Hi there. I thought I'd go over his, uh, graphing, so similar to what we've done in class, but um, just another way to experience it, to watch it, in case you need some more help. So let's suppose we're going to do a graph of some data we collected. Maybe we'll do, um, say, elevation in meters and time. And say hours. So elevation is height, like if you're going up hiking, the higher you walk, the the more elevation you gain. So let's suppose you collect some data, something like this. So these are data points. Um, some people are kind of joining lines, and you typically do not want to do that. There are some cases maybe where you want to join a line to sh show some sort of data um, in some kind of graph, but to typically in physics we're not doing that. We're going to draw what uh, we call a line of best fit, maybe something like that. And so that's a trend line. So the trend here is linear, uh, linear line or linear function. So the most common way we're going to analyze linear functions is them using the, um, the form y equals mx plus b. So that's slope. This is y-intercept. Slope, so m equals rise over run, which equals change in y over change in x, which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So to calculate slope, to find the slope, we choose any two points on the trend line. Okay, that's important. So I could just randomly take two points, say that point and this point. Uh, so we'll call this maybe point one and point two, where this has coordinates x1, y1, and this would have coordinates x2, y2. And I'm just going to make up some numbers. Maybe this one is, um, let's see here, maybe that's 50. 150, 200, 300, and this will be time maybe 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, well it's quite long, so that's a really long hike people are doing, 14, 16, maybe it's a multi-day hike, 20, 22. Okay, so x1, y1, x1 is around 3, and y1 is around just over 150, say 1, 160. Here we have x2, which looks to be about 15.5. y2 looks to be uh, 300, 350. It's about 330. So there's all the information that we can gather from this. Uh, this graph. Actually, we can also find our x or our y-intercept. This guy looks to be about maybe 105. We can say y-intercept equals 105 meters. So that's basically just reading the graph. So now we're going to use use these numbers to make some calculations or to get um, an equation for the line. So we're going to do this guy. We're going to do slope is equal to the change in y, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we say m equals, I'll rewrite that. So that's equal to y2 is this, so that's uh, 330 minus 160 all over 15.5, uh, so that's x2 is right there over x1, which is 3. So that is equal to 40, 170. The 
the units for y is a meter, so it's 170 meters over uh, 12.5 hours. Okay, so I have my calculator up here, so I'll go 170 divided by 12.5 equals 13.6. meters per hour. So then finally we're going to reconsider this which is the equation of linear function in slope intercept form. So I know what B is. B is my y-intercept which is 140 meet, what, 105 meters and M is our slope which is 13.6. So we could say y equals 13.6 meters per hour times x plus 105 meters. Um, but what I was saying in class earlier is we, sh we can use more meaningful symbols. Like we're not talking about y's and x's, we're talking about elevation and time. So elevation maybe could be height. So h, h for height is 13.6 meters per hour times time plus 105 meters. So there we have it. So couple things to note on this. This is the slope. Slopes, generally speaking, refer to a rate of change. So in this case we're talking about the rate that elevation changes with time. And y-intercept generally talks about um, starting conditions. So in this case, 105 is the starting elevation. So then the last thing we could do with this equation, this guy here, is use it to make predictions. So what we've done is we're creating a model. We're, this is a mathematical model it's a mathematical model that represents or it models how this person is hiking um, so we can use that model to make a prediction so for example predict elevation after say 30 hours. So does that make sense actually even as a question? Well, if say this is representing a a large or long slow hike up some mountains, say like a trek in Nepal. Nepal is a small country in the Himalayas and you can go trekking, you can start at I don't know, it's 500 meters maybe and you can slowly walk up to say oh, all the way up to like um, quite easily up to 5,400 meters over a period of days or weeks. So it's possible this could be tracking the, the elevation gain of a trek in Nepal. Anyways, can we predict the elevation after 30 hours of hiking? Sure, we can say, well, elevation h equals 13.6 uh, meters per hour times 30 hours plus 105 meters. just to note that you'll notice that these two units are going to cancel out. This is like an h in the numerator, or hour in the numerator, and this is an hour in the denominator. So h over h would be cancel each other out. Let's see what this is. 13.6, um, is that put times 30 equals plus 105. So it's 513. So that could be a prediction made from that equation. We could also say, hey, uh, how long is it going to take me to get up to 800 meters? So we have our equation here. Sometimes I won't draw in all the all the units, especially when I'm kind of doing more math-oriented stuff, like just moving numbers around. Um, if I want to know, if I want to solve for time, 
first thing I'll do is I'll subtract 105 from each side. So I get h minus 105 equals 13.6t. And then I'll divide both sides by 13.6. So that'll give me h minus 105 over 13.6 equals t. So I'm looking for the time where my elevation gain is, is 800 meters. So if I go, maybe we'll use green here. Time equals 800 minus 105 over 13.6. So 800 minus 105 divided by 13.6. I get 51.1 hours. And you notice I've rounded this to three significant fi uh, figures. Um, I, could, I could actually even write this again using units just to, to show that it would work if you kept your units in there. So that's 800 hours. So, yeah, sorry. 800 meters minus 105 meters over 13.6 um, meters per hour. So that gives me units of meters divided by meters per hour, so that's like this kind of thing. Those cancel out and that puts the, the hour in the numerator. So anyways, that's just a, another review of working with, with um, functions.